Hello, hello. <laughs> Welcome back. Welcome aboard the Captain Blackbox. Hey, what a timing. Megas, thank you so, so much. subscribers, please make your way to the first class cabin, where complimentary drinks, snacks, and premium flight entertainment will be served. Thank you. Megas, thank Captain. you so, so much. Five years, time flies. Thanks for everything and may Fortuna be with you on the journey to 747 slash 777 slash 787 smile. <laughs> Thank you so, so much. Megas, has it been five years? God, yeah, 60 months. It, it's incredible, isn't it? When I hear these numbers, I'm like, no way. No way. Hey, Milton. It's an incredible long time. Five years. Thank you so much, Megas. Thank you for your friendship. Thanks for all the support. And I did get a message just uh, prior to the stream regarding... Uh, what was it again? Um, okay, yeah, we'll do that in Discord then. Ah, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Fantastic. Right, so, uh, hello to Lee. Good evening, if he gets you. And uh, we've got um, Dr. Fred here. How's the skin? <laughs> What's left of it? My leg is all right. It's uh, it's uh, not as painful Welcome as it was yesterday. The Captain Black Box Duo yesterday Channel was pretty, pretty tough. Could new subscribers please make their way to the first class cabin where complimentary drinks, snacks and premium flight infotainment will be served. Thank you. And we have a new member, Tom. Z Tom coming in or Tom's coming in with a Twitch Prime. Thank you so, so much for that. Big round of applause. Chris, nice to see you as well. Chris, I hope all is good. 
Right, we're flying to Rovaniemi today because, unfortunately, my timing is so bad. Um, we, uh, we've got a holiday trip coming up. We're going to Switzerland uh, to visit my, my brother and his family over, the next, over this weekend. So, uh, unfortunately, it's the official uh, uh, Fly and See Santa event this weekend. So I can't join, which is, uh, which is a shame. So, um, yeah, I thought I might as well fly today. So we are on live weather. We are on live time. And the routing is interesting. <laughs> it takes us straight up north. So we can't really miss it, can we? It's like just head north and that's it. You would prefer Switzerland as well? Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. And apparently they're going to have snow. So... Um, and that's something I am actually uh, looking forward to. Snow without having to de-ice the aircraft. <laughs> well, I mean, Megas, you've got snow, don't you? Haven't you already got snow? So I'm, I, I'm pretty sure you have. And I mean, Frankfurt as well. Frankfurt is supposed to have um, snow coming as well, right? Before Christmas. And Niller, hey, yeah, so snow in Denmark. Okay, there we go. Yeah, 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 yeah. You see? Hamburg had snow? Hang on, we didn't have snow. When did Hamburg have snow? Scandal. I don't have any snow here. Right, quickly. Um, so the flight time is um one hour 30 minutes so we've got a bit of time to discuss stuff up in cruise flight i think um there was one topic that uh hit the news uh a350 diverting somewhere in africa uh welcome aboard the captain black box twitch channel subscriber so we can have a little talk about it could new subscribers please make your way to the first class cabin where wow, drinks, that is also a very long time. Flight entertainment will be Hero served. in Hong Thank Kong, you. coming in with three years. Thank you so much for the three years. <laughs> Greetings, and I assume you are in Hong Kong. Greetings to Hong Kong. I hope you're doing well. Yeah, Luanda, I think it was, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Papa Charlie, good evening. Nice to see you. Good, so the weather brief is as follows. We've got uh, Rovaniemi. Um, easterly winds or northeasterly winds overcast 600 so kind of typical weather up there uh, minus five degrees oh is anybody actually flying joining that event on on the weekend because i wasn't sure whether or not they are actually giving up slot times again remember about two years or three years ago we had the issue that we couldn't even get to rovaniemi because there was so much traffic and we were like I think we took off in, in Edinburgh or something, and then we got stuck in Norway already. We got holding over Norway, and so in the end we diverted um, to Kiruna or Kiruna or something, something like that. I remember that uh, quite vividly. Tremonia, okay, well there we go. So we can talk about the approach and etc. Make sure you take all the fuel that you can get uh, on that day. Hey, Mark. Hello, hello. How are you doing? How's the kitchen going? So the alternate is uh, Echo Fox Kilo Tango. Uh, weather is all right. Just a little snowfall. Same for Romaniemi. Some small uh, snowfall. And Riga here as well. Uh, currently broken uh, 4.9. Minus 3 degrees. Cold. Cold, cold, cold. So I might as well start the uh, APU. Passengers, everybody is on board already. Kiruna, yeah, in Sweden, yeah, exactly. Yes, Avenger, we're going to visit uh, Santa because I can't join the event on, on the weekend, unfortunately. So I wish I could, but um, unfortunately, no, no joy. Um... Let me have a quick look at the wind. So we've got um, 170 at 7. So it's going to be a southerly departure. 
and I expect a departure called what was it? Oops, um, it's called Sokva to Foxtrot, apparently. Hey, Alex, how are you doing? And Alexander, hello to you as well. So, ground charts, let's take um, parking stands, airport info. So, we are parked um, next to that rondel there. So 105, that's where we're parked. Um, and then we shall depart. Departure. Um, Sokva to Foxtrot it was, right? Yeah, there we go. So it's an Arnav departure. Yeah, Arnav Sid. Um, we've got... Um, Waypoint. Hello, Black Box. At Nish Climb 4000. Hey, Brennell, how are you doing? Yeah, so today we're doing the following. Um, so we're flying, yeah, the Phoenix A320 to Rovaniemi. And then uh, the second uh, thing we're going to do is fly the Apache. I've got another mission, practice mission to do today, learning to fly the Apache. And then we're doing the third one at around uh, 9 UTC. Uh, we'll continue on the VFAR tour, uh, Norway tour. So anybody that wishes to fly along will be on the multiplayer server on, on the Microsoft and uh, the first flight will take the Kodiak and then on flight two and maybe three, depending how much time we have, we plan to take the DHC2, the Beaver, which is a free add-on here in Microsoft Flight Sim. So anybody can uh, take that as well. Yes, Alex, doing very well. Thanks for asking. All good. So that's the departure route uh, that we're planning. So... Uh, flight number, windmill, one uh, seven one one. Man, yesterday's flights were so cool. I still um, thought the, uh, the second flight uh, in that low-vis operation there, the takeoff, absolutely cool yesterday. And then the uh, the incredible um, Arnav arrival into Vienna, runway 29. Very nice. That was very cool. So that's the final load sheet already. Uh, cost index six fuel is still expensive it seems and then we have uh, 380 380 at minus um, 53 not too bad oh Charonia, your 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 play was broken yesterday okay uh, why do we fly when it's dark? Uh, not always. <laughs> but it's funny, you know, uh, when I fly in daytime, someone will come on, why don't you fly in real time? <laughs> and then I fly real time, and it's like, why, do you, why don't you fly in at day, uh, daytime? Now, it is just the way it is. At the moment, um, Romaniemi is pretty much dark all day round. So even if I put this to 12 in the afternoon... Um, it's going to be pretty dark anyways. Yeah, Brennald, yeah. So big, big shout out to Senshai who made the, um, made that video. Yeah. Hey, Sim Caesar, nice to see you. Big round of Sim C uh, applause for Sim Caesar. Make sure to check out his channel. And I'm sure today, Thursday, yeah, you're probably streaming, right? Sim Caesar later. Um... Hey, Iceberg, yeah. Right, uh, where were we? Uh, so, let's have a look. Do we have a first altitude climb? 4,000, initial climb. Right, there we go. So, we'll use uh, 4,000 in here. Um, and then we'll go ahead and already enter the final figure. So, 57.7. And the trim is 30.1. Zero fuel weight. The fuel is 5.8 or 5.9, actually. Oh, hang on. Can't hear any sounds. General options. Just making sure that I have the right... Um... Ah, there we go. That should be there as well. 
Why is that so quiet? Oops. Can't hear anything here. Ah, there we go. You are streaming today. Fantastic. Hey, man. Is it just me or is there no sounds? Where's the sim sounds for crying out loud? Hang on. Uh... Ah, that's why. Ha ha. There we go. That's better. Why no GSX today? <laughs> you know exactly why. Um, the alternate fuel. Um, hey, Tuning. Hey, Johnny, how are you doing? Are you excited about the Aerosoft A330? Uh, no. So, I will, I will first of all see what others are saying. The reason is, I've been disappointed so often that, um, yeah, I'll wait. I'll wait and see, um, yeah, I'll wait and see what happens um, and what people think. My experience with Aerosoft aircraft add-ons is not the best, so I will see... And uh, well, we'll just wait and see. Right, so that's that. 4,000 we said. And uh, uh, since today I have problems in all airline aircraft to toggle the buttons correctly. Are you having full screen or um, are you using windowed mode or something? Because often that can be the case that something's not aligned that way. Uh, are any large gates for Schengen flights from Paris, Charles de Gaulle? Well, yeah, the, uh, the terminal south should have a large, t large, um, a large uh, terminal, large gates, yeah. So, alternate is uh, point 0.8. There we go. Right, so departure, uh, 1.8. And we have the... Zokva to Foxtrot. Insert. There we go. So we're going to quickly um, just check the uh, the routing here with the, the flight plan. So it is 400, uh, 1500 above is no issue. Max 210, 401, two and a half above, no problem. 402, 60 above. Uh, no, actually, 6 zero maximum at 402, so that's correct. And then um, it's up uh, to 403. 9 is above, no problem. 404, 140 above, no problem. Uh, 405, 170 above, no problem. And then uh, 406, 190 above, also no problem. And then to Zokva, two to zero above, also no problem at all. So that's all correctly programmed. Hey Yoda, <laughs> no problem. When's the next uh, when's the next game uh, for the Dutch? And who are you playing against? Yeah, Tremonia, I'll be with you in a couple of seconds. So, uh, we'll go ahead, second of flat plan, copy active, rat nav, this is an art of departure, don't need anything in here, um, and then for the secondary we'll go and do a return plan, 1-8 
for landing RLS uh, Zulu 18, no star and no buyer. Fantastic, that's inserted. Um, performance. Yeah, I'm I'm using DX11 also um, because yeah, those texture issues in DX12. I hope they fix that soon. Please tell this uh, the person who have problems with the buttons. There is a lens correction mode. Okay, so uh, Johnny um, Brannell, one of our moderators, is saying that um, uh, if you have problems with the buttons. Uh, there's a lens correction mode in Microsoft. Uh, this option must be off. Is that under general options, Reynolds? So general options. Hey, uh, graphic setting. Uh, lens correction. There we go. Here. Third last point. So, uh, Johnny, try that. Make sure that is off. Hey, Andreas, how are you doing? Yeah, Johnny, switch it off. Uh, maybe that fixes the problem. Thank you, Brennold, for the uh, for the reply. Uh, we'll do packs off. Anti-ice engine, anti-ice. We'll calculate that with on. Uh, we'll take a wet runway. And uh, we'll take full length. And it's going to be 1.8. Yeah, let's calculate that. 63.4 Yeah, that's correct. I don't know what's wrong with the the fuel. I mean, it's always well, I guess it's uh, just calculating a bit wrong. Uh it's going to be landing northerly runway. So probably it's going to be have a VOR approach or RNF approach. Um, let's take uh, Arnav and we may have a surprise during flight. We'll see. Um, and then it's going to be the arrival, the Renvi arrival. So to Delta and the approach will probably start. Uh, Johnny, big thanks to Brennells who who uh, who gave the uh, the input there. Uh, Marvin, Phoenix or Flyby Wire? Well, Phoenix I do prefer because it gives me a lot more options um, and it's more reliable. Hey, nice. Have a nice flight to uh, uh, the triple seven. Nice. Um, right. So, uh, what was I going to do? I was going to do. Arrivals. So we'll take um, the airport, the parking stand, arrivals, um, initial approach zero 03 we'll take. So that's from Renvi. Yes, Renvi to Delta. So, um, Renvi to Ropoff. Okay, and then the approach. If it's the art of approach, it'll be from Ropoff. Okay, so Ropoff is going to be our initial fix then. <laughs> yeah, go around the runway. Well, I mean, you would expect the Phoenix, since it's payware, to have more options. And um, so for me, being rated on the A320, I just have so many, so many options to play with, especially with the failures. And we've done that. Uh, you probably didn't watch the stream a couple of days ago when I was um, dispatching with a popped circuit breaker. So, for example, I popped the um, FCU2 circuit breaker. So, by just simply using 
the FSI panel app, I can pop any circuit breaker that's modeled here, and there's hundreds of um, circuit breakers popped. And I can do the procedure just like in real life. Um, you know, I have the effects like in real life, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, I can also do a, a big, big amount of different failures, uh, TCAS practice, all kinds of stuff. Uh, so, for me, the Phoenix is just a lot more interesting. Kabouter, hey, how you doing? Patrimonia, <laughs> uh, I, I, I don't really mind that. Good. So we've done all that. Um, so what I want to do is go data, pilot routes. We'll take uh, Riga, Rovaniemi 1. Hey, Vincent. Yeah, thanks. Uh, yeah. I saw that. Um, it's not storing it. That's weird. Okay, doesn't matter. So we'll take one more thing here. Fix info. So the engine out procedure in Riga. So get. Oh, we got NDP one. That's interesting enough. So NDP one. So we'll enter one five four zero and three. Zero four zero thrust reduction acceleration and engine out is going to be one thousand six hundred and the procedure is just uh, one seven eight to twenty five miles. So we'll take fix info one eight one seven eight degrees twenty five miles. Cool. Right, diff rips performance uh, is the last thing you want to enter. We've already calculated it, just didn't enter it yet. Yeah, comply, that's fine. So, you know, that's your view. I have a different view. So, yeah, the important thing is that you enjoy your flying. I enjoy my flying. But yeah, you asked why I use the Phoenix and not the uh, flower wire. Uh, that was the answer. Right, flaps one, 68 degrees. Full length. Uh, too dark in the apron, yeah. Yeah, we, that's just uh, one of those things. Three, eight, four, zero. But, you know, I don't really get worked up on these things. Um, I don't look for perfection everywhere. So if it's if it's a little bit darker. Yeah, but I don't think that's, it's that bad, is it? Oh, sorry. So right now, I don't think it's that bad, is it? Yeah, um, also, let me say that I think the uh, the motors of the fly-by-wire are doing a fantastic job. And uh, the fact also that the add-on is completely free of charge is amazing. So it's a, a very good add-on, no doubt. It's just I prefer the, uh, the Phoenix. Are you ready for the departure brief? Go ahead. So we are going to depart 18. Departure route was the, or is the, um, so it's no control here, by the way. Um, let's get the chart up. So Sofka um, to Foxtrot departure up 4,000 feet, the sector altitude 2,300, so pretty low. 
and um, we have extra fuel according to the flight plan of around about 800 kilograms 23 minutes taxi out um, pretty straightforward there shouldn't be any hot spots um, today so push back taxi out via Charlie Foxtrot it seems um, that's not, not Charlie Foxtrot is, is it uh, Foxtrot all the way let me just see here on the April chart uh, yeah, it's Foxtrot actually. Foxtrot uh, all the way runway 18. Engine out straight ahead, 170 degrees, uh, acceleration at 1600 feet, and um, once the engine is secured, we'll uh, continue climb 3000, radar vectored approach 18. Weather is good enough to return, and we are already below max landing weight. RTO is no factor, we have enough stop margin. And uh, at the moment, I don't see any threats either. So I'm just going to go ahead and enter the values here for... For FS2 crew, so we have 138, 140, 141. Welcome aboard the Captain Blackbox Twitch oh. channel subscriber experience. Another thing I want to want to mention. Could new subscribers please make your way to the first class cabin? Our complimentary drinks, snacks, hey, Brennan, thank you so, so much. Thank you. Thank you, Brennan, for gifting another sub to Lilo Pilot this time. Thank you so so much for that, Lilo Pilot. I'm sure you're already uh, in the process of saying thank you. Thank you so so much. Transitions in five thousand, so we are good to go. Right. Any questions? No questions. Cockpit preparation checklist. Gear pins and covers. Removed. Fuel quantity. 5,840 kilograms balanced. Seat belts. On. Eight years. Naf. Barrow ref. QNH 1006 set. One zero zero six set cockpit preparation checklist completed. Let me just check why. Oh. Ah, okay. Ah, that doesn't work today. restart that uh, there was a question I was watching the replay of your last um, x plane flight we're talking about making a video review of what's wrong with the current uh, flight sim I think it's a great idea yeah so I mean it's just an issue that I personally have at the moment with Microsoft flight sim um, I would say the absolute majority and with how many millions is it 10 million how many customers or sold copy controls restart the checklist fly controls are you ready for the departure brief A gift from me to you. Oh, Enjoy Trimonia. the gifted sub. My God, <laughs> Tremonia, thank you so 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 much. Gifting five subs, so that's a total of seventy-nine gifted subs on the channel now. Tremonia, thank you so 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 much for that. My God, uh, Goofy, Johnny, Bilbos, Stoffer, and Nicotine, please say a big thank you to Tremonia. Thank you very very much. 
So sorry for the slight delay. I just need to enter the date again. Take it from me is one eight. V two was one four one. Sixty eight legs. V R one four zero. Uh, v one is one three eight. That's non reduced. Click one plus F. Transitions in five thousand. And we're flying probably thirty six thousand feet. And that's for the. Cockpit preparation checklist. E4 start checklist. Well, what's going on here? Are you ready for the departure brief? Hey Medes, how are you doing? And once again, Tremonia, thank you so, so, so much. Are you ready for the departure brief? Go ahead. Any questions? No questions. There we go. So now we're synced up. Ready. Cockpit preparation checklist. Gear pins and covers removed. Fuel quantity. 5,820 kilograms balanced. Seat belts on, eight years. NAF, bar row ref. Kinich 1006 set. 1006 set. Cockpit preparation checklist completed. E4 start checklist. Parking brake set. Takeoff speeds and thrust. V1, 138, VR140, V2141, flex temp 68. Set and checked. V1138, VR140, V2141. Windows. Closed. Beacon. On. V4 start checklist completed. Flight deck to ground. Go ahead, flight deck. We will be ready shortly. Roger. Riga traffic, windmill 711, stand 105, pushing back. He sounds like Ted. <laughs> Well, sounds British. Edgy, hello to you. Yeah, so the FS2 crew, I have two mods now. So it's the FS2 crew, um, some normal app, and they have another app for the pushback. So that's what I'm using uh, right now. We are ready for pushback and engine start. Roger, release the parking brakes, please. Brakes released. Pushing back. Starting engine two. Okay. You're cleared behind it. You start your engines at your discretion. Thank you much. So I'm going to try to push into that... Um, Come on. Pushback complete. Set parking brakes, please. Oh.
Brakes all set. Roger, okay, the tow bar is disconnected and the equipment is clear. We will see you on the right with the pin. You are clear to disconnect. Clear to disconnect. Thanks, have a good flight. See you later. Starting engine one. Okay. Uh, Andreas, well, yeah, that's not GSX, though. I mean, I threw that out. Any good cooler? Planning change my to a... Yeah, so Bagus uh, is the the perfect uh, person to ask here. I know there's some good air coolers, but personally, I think uh, you're better off with a, um, a water cooler. We are now going to take you through our safety procedures and equipment. As this information is for your benefit, we ask you to watch and listen carefully. The safety card in your seat area shows details of escape routes, oxygen masks and life jackets. It also shows the bracing position, which you must adopt in an emergency landing. Flight control check. On the main deck, there are Ready. two exits at the rear of the first Full up. cabin. Full down. Neutral. Full left. On the upper deck, there Full is right. Neutral. Full left. Full right. Neutral. In the unlikely event of having to use hey, Greeno, how you doing? Leave all hand baggage behind and remove high heel shoes as they may tear the slide. Please now ensure that your table is folded away, your seat back is upright, with the armrest down, and your seat belt fastened. The seatbelt is fastened and adjusted like this, and unfastened like this. When the fastened seatbelt signs are off, After start checklist. you must go back to your seat anti -ice. and fasten your seatbelt Engine anti-ice on. E-cam status. Check. Pitch trim. fastened at all times and visible to avoid being disturbed in flight. 28.5%. If the cabin air Set supply and fail, oxygen will be provided. Set Lines and checked. Like this will appear automatically. Stay in your seat and pull Restart the checklist. Anti-ice. Engine anti-ice on. E-cam status. Checked. Your mouth and nose Pitch like trim. And Set and checked. Adjusting the band for Rudder theory. trim. Zero. Do make sure your own mask is fitted before helping anyone else. Neutral. After start checklist completed. Liga traffic, windmill 7 or not is taxing uh, water, runway 18 in Riga. Clear left side. The side. Clear right side. To inflate, pull the red toggle as shown. The air can be topped up by using the mouthpiece. There is a whistle here for attracting attention. Do not inflate your life jacket you are outside the aircraft. We will supply life cups for babies and life jackets for infants. Finally, ladies and gentlemen, please study the safety card and take notice of the fasten seatbelt sign. May we Break remind check. you that electrical portable items such as gates, pressure zero, and word processing equipment may interfere with the aircraft and must be switched off from landing. Portable telephones must be switched off while the aircraft engine. Running. As this is a no smoking service, what nationality? I'm German. Signs will remain on for the duration of the flight. Smoking is not permitted at any time while right, on Left side, right if side, all clear. Please ask one of the crew. Thank you. So, Tremonia's already airborne, it seems. Hey, Roy, how are you doing? Nice to see you. Hope you're all well. And Shifunski, hey, nice to see you too. level <laughs> 230 man uh, so Greno I actually lived in the UK uh, for about five years when I was um, when we moved there when I was um, 14 or 13 and uh, I actually I don't have a German um, high school uh, diploma so I have uh, not the Abitur as they say I've got A-levels 
so that's where I picked up the English. <laughs> that's really kind, Der uh, Thank you. It always depends. It depends. Sometimes um, I do have a you know German accent, and sometimes I don't. It's it's uh, it sometimes varies day by day. Atrimonia, that's fantastic. Right, everybody's ready. Um, cabin is ready, so... Taxi checklist. Flight controls, checked. Checked. Flap setting. Config 1 plus F. Config 1 plus F. Radar and predictive wind shear system. On and auto. Engine mode selector. Normal. E-camp memo. Take off, no blue. Taxi checklist completed. <laughs> Take off runway. Take off runway, confirm. Approach path, clear of traffic. Confirmed. Runway 18, confirmed. Cabin crew, be seated for takeoff. TCAS. T A R A. Packs 1 and 2. Off. Lineup checklist completed. It's so weird. I actually heard the packs being switched off. Really fascinating. Hendrik, how are you doing? Yes, I did get a warning today. So there's a huge. Um, test alarm going on in Germany today yeah I got both I have the app Nina installed and I have um, well I also got an SMS yeah oh yeah the, the packs now it's it's a uh, it's not a mandatory thing so you don't have to switch off the packs it is recommended in certain aspects or certain conditions however for me in um, in summertime when it's hot, uh, definitely do I not uh, go and uh, oh no. When did he just come online? Twenty nine nine two five. Good evening, Riga. Approach. Uh, Windmill 711 is holding short uh, 18, ready for departure. Oh, I'm not hearing anything. Sorry. Nation Rovaniemi, Sabati, Foxtrot, departure, Squawk 4154. Windmill 711, Squawk 4154, cleared the Zokva to Fox for departure up 4,000 feet. And uh, say again the rest if I missed anything. Oh, that should be it. And wind 1730, you're cleared for takeoff, report when airborne. Thank you so much. 18, clear takeoff, call you when airborne, Windmill 711. Yeah, so normally um, in summertime, I would not have packs off. If I really need the extra takeoff power from the engines, I would uh, then switch on the APU and use the um, APU bleed on the packs to have cooling. So everything is briefed, um, no changes, up 4,000 feet. And uh, we're cleared for takeoff. Are you ready? Ready? Ready. Take off. Check. Manflex 68, SRS runway, auto thrust blue. Checked. Thrust set. One hundred knots. Checked.
V1. Rotate. Positive climb. Gear up. Gear up. Nuff. Windmill 711 is airborne passing 600. Windmill 711, we approach radar contact, climb flight level 270. Climb level 270, windmill 711. So, climb blue. But initially we have... Uh, so he didn't say unrestricted. Put autopilot one on. And with no seven Thanks, one, just to confirm that uh, it's via the sit or uh, are we unrestricted climb two seven zero? It will be unrestricted. Thank you much, unrestricted two seven zero window seven. Come on. So in this case, I'm going to pull open climb so that we don't have that restriction at six thousand on the routing there. So, we're going to monitor the icing situation, um, engine anti ice is on, minus 2 degrees TAT, um, wing anti ice on, yeah, so half wing anti ice on as well. I can hear the engine's actually going down a bit, um, although... Normally the thrust increases a bit, but uh, the thing is this, so when you extract bleed air, um, the climb power sometimes will be adjusted by the Fardex. There we go. And windmill 711, proceed direct Sokva. Thank you very much, Dr. to Sokva, windmill 7, one on. Flaps, zero. Speed checked. Flaps zero. So we're above sector altitude, we can accept that. So let's go direct to Zokba. Insert. That's a nice shortcut. Yeah, that will be okay um, in a minute, Megas. It's always the same regarding um, the Phoenix. Have you never seen that? No, I see that pretty much every flight. Although what I what I didn't do yet is the wind, did I? No, so I have to do the wind request. That's something I forgot. Standard cross checked. Passing flight level zero six Welcome two. Welcome to the Captain Black Box Twitch channel subscriber experience. Could new now, subscribers please checked. make your way to the first class cabin, where complimentary drinks, off. snacks, and premium flight entertainment will be served. Thank you. Good evening, Captain. Welcome hey. to Finland. Thank you so much to Oscar November India. Thank you so much for the 38 months. That's also a very long time. I'm sure you got lots of snow in Finland right now, correct? Um, so... Hello to Electrox Soldier. And uh, Bill Boss Wagon. Hey. I keep motivated by keeping it fresh and induce challenges like difficult weather or failures. Of course, ATC events are also fun too. Well, there we go, yeah. And for me here, uh, flying online on VATSIM or Pilot Edge is just. Um, I just, you know. I just, I need that for immersion, really. So whenever I don't fly online, I have a good reason because I want to demonstrate something with failures or something. But normally, whenever there is a VATSIM or any ATC controller on board then, or online, I will use it. Hey, Cloakon, how are you doing? And Kolimato, hello to you as well.
Uh, when it comes to flying, do you fly at least once a week in your captain job? Yes. Unless, unless I'm on holiday or something. Um, but normally I would not have more than four days off in a row. Yeah, so definitely, usually I will have... Um, good evening, uh, it's Star Road 3, November 10th. Landing lights off. Engine anti is off. Seat belts off. There we go. Lovely. And let's have a look here. So there's Tallinn straight ahead. And the routing tonight takes us, like we said, pretty much northbound from here on. Um, when did you decide to, that you wanted to become a pilot? Did you have any other dreams? Very good question. Now, for me, um, I am actually coming from a family, or I have a family history of now fourth. I'm, I'm the fourth generation of pilots in my family. So, um, my father was a um, jet pilot in the German Air Force. He flew Starfighter and uh, Tornado. So I got in contact with flying um, at a very early age, let's say four or five years, when I started to realize that my father was a pilot. Um, and, um, you know, I was taken along sometimes on the weekends because uh, my father was a display pilot. So I remember watching him doing displays um, around uh, southern Germany, around the airports there on the weekends. Um, and so, yeah, that, that's how I literally was infected again um, with the aviation book. So for me, it's always been clear that I want to become a pilot. Um, it was never uh, a question. So, um, just going to tell the sim sounds about. Are you happy you got infected? Yes, indeed. So uh, for me, when I started uh, flying at the age of 14 with the glider planes, um, and then, you know, with the training later on, etc., etc., um, it's definitely something I've always felt really, really passionate about, really connected with. And um, the only thing that I find somewhat worrisome and maybe sometimes a bit uh, of a shame is the, the fast paced um, changes that happen in aviation. Um, so when I started flying, we had the 727 still in place. We had the 747-200 in place. Um, DC-11, I think, um, or DC-10, or DC-10. Um, so lots of planes with um, with a flight engineer um, on board. And uh, so I've, I've quite uh, vividly kind of noticed the changes back then um, when flight engineers actually were removed from the flight deck. Hey, Tepixki. Yeah, so, um, you know, the changes have been ongoing. Welcome aboard ongoing. the Captain Black Box Duo Channel Experience. Could new subscribers please make their way to the first class cabin oh, where Yannick. complimentary drinks, <laughs> snacks and premium flight infotainment will be served. Yannick, I remember that well. Yannick, Welcome thank you so, so much me. for the subscription. Last time still on TWR with your emergency arrival was quite some time ago, feels thinking, man. It was. Was that the flap issue we had? I think I went around, didn't I? I had a flap issue program that went around. Something like that. Yannick, thank you so, so much. And thanks for the controlling. Thanks for coming online. Really, really nice. Enjoy the lap land arrival. It will do. It will do. Well, the northern lights, they are not... Uh, what my views are regarding a single pilot flight deck, I'm, I'm opposing it, obviously. Um, not out of principle, but out of um, safety concerns. Um, 
So for me at the moment, I see that, especially on long range flights, very, very, um, or a, a very tough or hard burden on the, on the remaining pilot in the flight deck. Trying to stay awake, trying to stay vigilant, trying to stay um, alert when you're flying long range um, and then being alone in the flight deck is going to be tough. Uh, so yeah, I see that as uh, definitely very skeptical. So that per se already in my my eyes already undermines the safety level that we have at the moment. And then even en route, there are certain decisions that you have to make. Um, let's say, you know, you, you, you have to avoid some thunderstorms or something or um, well, there's something else. And normally you would refer, you know, to your colleague and get his views on the situation and then make a decision. Um, so, you know, even those still things, having that them removed is something I don't see helpful in regards of, uh, you know, trying to achieve the, the top tier of safety. Well, Roy, I fear, I fear it, uh, it's going to happen soon in the military for sure and then uh, probably cargo flights at some point and then at the moment Airbus is um, is uh, currently working together with Cathay Pacific uh, trying to get a A350 licensed for uh, single pilot operations and they're they're aiming to have that released by 2025 so not that far far away um, I know you probably get this question a lot but how much flight simming how does uh, flight simming compare to real life? How close can a, a normal simmer get? Well, I mean, let's see it this way. So personally, if the level of immersion that I get um, with these flight sims wasn't as high as it is, I would not stream. I would not fly flight simless in my spare time, obviously. So you can at least say that it's fascinating. Uh, let me just get a higher altitude. Uh, windmill 711 is reaching 270. Yeah, Windmill 711, you're now leaving my space. One to you come, one to two, there's my Have a good flight, Joel. Thank you so much for the service and one to two point eight. Uh, have a great uh, week ahead. Take care. Yeah, so. Um, What's what's become so fascinating is the the amount of uh, systems that are simulated, um, and also if you use um, if you use um, you know VATSIM for example, um, I find it so fascinating that very often the uh, Actually, it's a, it's a standard these days that the procedures that you have on VATSIM actually match the real world procedures almost one to one. So let's say I'm departing on VATSIM out of Frankfurt. Literally, it just feels so realistic because the radio calls, the clearances, everything is exactly like in real life. So that's something flight simmers um, should appreciate. Um, the, the possibility to have a, an amazing amount of immersion is there. It's just for you as a flight simmer to make use of it. Um, regarding flight feel, that's something obviously that I personally get emotional about. So when I have a sim like Microsoft Flight Sim where already so many features are so fantastic but it's lacking in the flight feeling. Um, or let's say weather simulation, turbulence simulation, wind gust simulation, inertia. And right there, Microsoft is just not top notch. X-Plane does that, for example, a lot better. So that's why I get kind of you know worked up about it. So when I do manual flying, here in the A320, it's not that bad because the A320 is flight augmented in real life as well. So actually simulating a320 here in the flight sim is, is actually not that um 
that different compared to the, you know, the real aircraft. Apart from the weather simulation, yes. So when you have, let's say, smooth conditions, uh, little turbulence, then it feels pretty much like a real aircraft, yeah. But once you get the crosswind, the gusty crosswinds, uh, yeah, then it starts feeling completely unnatural. And that's when I get a little bit upset about it. However, um, so for procedures, I actually use the Phoenix and I use the FS Labs to practice for my real world uh, flight sim checks. So that's something obviously that says a lot about how close uh, these sims have gotten to real to real aircraft. Um. <laughs> so, so fly uh, flight simulators while you're flying in, in cruise flight. Well, the, the rules are very strict on what you're supposed to do in the flight deck and what not. So, hey, stuff are hiding. Um, so, you know, you're not supposed to read a book, for example, because you have the risk of actually getting so immersed in that book that you kind of forget your surrounding. If you're reading a newspaper with small articles, the risk isn't as great that you're kind of, you know, um, not realizing anymore what's going on with the aircraft, etc. So, and uh, Muscular Zone, hey, how are you doing? Uh, Jamal, yes, of course, you are a, a sub. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, when you start responding to my question about video on the flights, sim uh, laws. Could you, okay, so, yeah, so, um, literally, you can you can cover that topic in in a couple of minutes' time. You don't need to make a lengthy video about it. Um, so. There are certain things that if they are not simulated and you fly manually, for example, um, you will very quickly, if you have real world experience flying wise, and it doesn't matter if you've, you've flown a Cessna um, or a jet, uh, you know, prop, whatever, um, you feel you have the basic understanding of what the aircraft should be doing and what it should feel like. And so you can relate to that. And then when you fly a simulator like in Maxwell Flight Sim and the aircraft is just not responding the way you would expect it to respond, um, then of course, yeah, you, you know, you've got to feel the discrepancies and you're going to feel a little bit upset about it. I'll give you an example. Hey, Hatchet! <laughs> Thank you so much for the 100 bits. Oh, that's really kind. So glad to hear your input of the real world uh, to sim world. I agree. Well, yeah, like I said, it's, you know, it's uh, everyone has the option to get themselves uh, immersed as much as they like. But I personally think it's a nice way to go about it. And if I if I got a number right, was it 10 million Microsoft customers now? Microsoft Flight Sim customers? 10 million? That's an amazing amount of... Um, of users. Let me just uh, try to see aboard the Captain if Black I got the number right. YouTube channel subscriber experience. Could new subscribers please make their way to the first class million, cabin right? where complimentary drinks, snacks and premium flight entertainment will be served. Thank you. There we go. Yeah, 10 million. So Microsoft Flight Simulator celebrates 10 million pilots. I would never have thought that. Never. 10 million. Uh, Aviator A320, thank you so, so much for the 10 months as well. <laughs> Always thankful for your educational videos. Thank you so much, Aviator. That's really kind. Thanks for the kind words and thank you for your support. Casper, uh, do you have colleagues also use desktop simulators? Well, rarely, Casper, but yes. And if you look at how many real world pilots we have now in the streaming or um, content creation arena on YouTube and Twitch. It, it says a lot. Oh, free on Game Pass. Okay, well, but, but still, I mean, what would you guess then, Bob? Uh, how many of these 10 million are actually flight simmers that regularly use uh, Microsoft Flight Sim? Uh, 
Uh, in the military, I can understand that because they are using drones already now with the introduction of new bomber. It will become a reality, but in co commercial aviation, I find it still strange. Yeah, Roy, um, I not only find it strange, but also I find it somewhat... Um, well, how should I put it? Um, somewhat careless or lacking the necessary respect regarding safety in aviation because if you start going away from what we have now is trying to achieve the maximum safety level that you can possibly get and we have found an amazing level if you look at the safety records of the last 10 years and the accident numbers and the amount of people that die in aviation, it has continuously um, been going down. So f aviation has become safer and safer and safer. And that is what I think should be the ultimate goal. And of course, it has to remain within boundaries where you kind of, you know, you can still have a functional um, aviation um, economic. So you still have airlines making some profit to invest in, into, you know, new new technology, new aircraft, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, however, if you start going on a path saying, well, you know what, um, we've got an issue um, getting enough pilots in the future, so. We don't want to pay more money for them um, to make it more attractive. Um, so actually, we're actually going to accept a higher level of risk and higher accident numbers in order to have airlines still being able to increase their revenue in the future um, without the need of having more pilots. Right, so that's to me, that's something unethical because it's a, a very cold calculation of accepting a higher death toll um, in response of a problem that can be solved otherwise. However, of course, that will cost money. Yeah, so Roy, um, so it's one of those things, right? People, so those that, that are pro single um, pilot concept, they will say, but how often does it happen that a captain becomes incapacitated, um, you know, in a critical phase of flight? Right? That's what I mean with these calculations. And they're gonna say, well, what about once a month? Uh, okay, so you have what, 12 accidents, um, you know, a year. Are we able to tolerate that? All right. So, hey, Toto. Yeah, actually, I, I know I, I have uh, I have some different numbers, but I, I'm not sure. Well, I'm not going to quote internal numbers. Um, but yeah, it's just from a calculation standpoint, right? Um, and, and the way they argue about this. Um, well, and uh, so you have people like me who oppose that, obviously. So I would rather have um, working conditions improved and, um, you know, some, some changes with regards to pilot training in the sense um, of having scholarships, having sponsorships, that sort of stuff um, to help get more people into that, uh, into that profession. Uh, what's the goal? Well, I mean, what's well the ultimate goal? Look, let this, from an ethical standpoint, the ultimate goal should be achieve the highest level of safety, right? Um, and of course, he, there are limits. If you look at costs, yes, um, but right now we've been on a path. That's what I was arguing about. So we've been on a path where safety has been proven to become more and more effective, and it's a mixture. So it's new technology in the aircraft, um, new concepts regarding training. Um, it's a mixture. Techno uh, technicians, right? So the way aircraft are, main are maintained, 
etc., etc., etc. Oh, the goal of single pilot concept. Well, ultimately, at the moment, it is to avoid having to spend a lot more money on getting more pilots. Right? Because the argument is as follows. The need for new pilots, so the amount of pilots needed over the next 20 years, roughly, is round about, what was it, 600,000 pilots or something? I think Boeing just brought out a new um, study on that. So 600,000 pilots worldwide. And they are saying that even if all flight schools worldwide would start training now, they will not be able to meet that demand. So, um, but the question is why? If it's such a fantastic job, right? Everybody seems to, to think that being a pilot is the best job ever. Um, you know, what's keeping people from uh, applying as a pilot? It's well paid, mostly. All right, everybody thinks it's such a cool job. So why don't we get uh, enough pilots? Uh, oh, wait, I've got to keep up with all the questions. So, uh, uh, I feel like aviation is heading towards reducing costs and making more dollars. Well, I mean, that's the economic uh, kind of, you know, um, path becoming uh, more um, cost effective, um, you know, profit maximization, that sort of stuff. Uh, did YouTube remove the best versus all chat options? I have no idea. I've not been following that lately. Yeah, Jeff, uh, so uh, JTFF, um, somebody came up yesterday and said that um, Asobo has confirmed on a Q&A that they are going to be going into um, development of the flight model. Um, so they're not completely ignoring it. It's just to have a different, um, well, a, a different way of balancing, um, you know, the, the aspects and... Um, putting resources um, to topics right now that they think are more important. Um, I would disagree with that because I would think um, flat model and that sort of stuff is more important, but hey, um, it's just one of those things where people have different opinions. Um, oh, you, so United Pilots are striking as we speak. Okay, so here's the thing, which of course is something that I understand um, people criticizing is that if you use your very strong position control, um, to kind of blackmail companies into higher wages I, I agree you have to be careful with that so it all has to just remain within certain limits and I've just heard was it um, American Airlines or something they got a pay increase of 30% or something so you know it, it, everything needs to be in a certain balance. Uh, MX1 recreated, climb to flight level 310. Just going to log on here. Climb to flight level 310, MX1. MX1, line up runway 15. Lining up 15, MX1. Delta, okay. Helsinki Control, good evening from Windmill 711, flight level 360. Good evening, Windwell 711, Helsinki Control, radar contact, runway 03. Runway 03, copy it, Windmill 711. Um, right, sorry for not keeping up on the, all the questions here. Um, Three, three, yeah. two, three. Voyager, moin. Clear to Helsinki via Tupu, one Delta. Black to the oh, Simfan. Yeah, so, uh, uh, Simfan. Three, three, uh, two, three, Here's one of those things that really I was so annoyed about. Um, the chief of the EASA, at the flight level so uh, here in Europe, he, his argument is exactly that. He was saying, well, 
Um, Great director. Not as accepted. If you look at, at pilot error and how many how many accidents are caused by pilot error, it would be safer Nothing to remove the pilot. Evening, uh, what kind of BS is that? So at least be so honest and then quote how many accidents in the last 10 years have been avoided by the pilots actually saving the aircraft and saving all you know everyone on board um where's that statistic right of course if you have an accident and we don't have many accidents thank god but yes of course a lot of accidents are caused by pilot error but then again what's the real issue there was it fatigue um, was it an inappropriate level automation? Right? There's so many aspects there, but that argument is so terrible. Is there a list available of where all the CPDLC notify codes are? Well, Florian, normally in real life, yes, uh, but here I just look at the uh, V-Pilot. Okay, um, uh, so when you double click on the on the center, in the text you will hear CPDLC lock on uh, and you get the code for that. Yeah, Papa Charlie, I mean, I'm, I'm with you there. Um, Clear you know, the for if a system is working that well, why change it? Um, and then risk having, you know, more deaths in aviation again. Stop climbing, flight level 360. Haley, Lord. Right, like, oh, so many questions today. Thank you so much for interacting. Um, <laughs> yes, exactly. So exactly that. So normally you have a chain of, of um, errors uh, faults that then lead to an accident and of course the the goal the ultimate goal is to to break that chain somewhere or you know swiss cheese model if you like um to try to align the the swiss cheese uh, slices in a, in a manner that you know the path isn't clear through it so um yeah and if an accident happens then you know pilot error so often it will be a contributing factor, but not the only factor in that. Yeah. Um, so it's, I find it, I find it's very kind of um, hard to understand. Like just mentioned, um, the wages, so pilot wages worldwide are on average very good. I don't think there's many pilots, unless you're working in some regions, of course, um, prone or known to be um, low cost um, and, uh, you know, exploitation taking part there. But overall, I would say the average, in the, at least in the Western countries, um, Europe, US, um, are in a, in, a, in a region that are, you know, that you could say that they are well paid. So again, the question is, why do we have the issue of not having enough pilots? Well, what's happening there? Um, hey, Cloaker, no worries. All good. The important thing is, cloak on that you stay, stay healthy, stay positive. I've got a letter today, actually. So uh, I got a letter from a company saying that in January I should, I should be. How should I say this? I should keep my my uh, my my telephone line clear. Uh, maybe I'll get a call. So, however, 
non-guaranteed because at the moment they can't exactly say how many people they can actually train each month so um, however, also on top of that, I've been put on a waiting list for the 787 yeah, one, one, for seven, February. So three, there as well, there, there's movement, but it's difficult to predict three, exactly when when I will get uh, zero, two, three, into five. a course. Well, what I wish, would like to have is, is um, you know, have a balance. So get experts from all sides. So get engineers. So get the professionals on this side. Get uh, engineers, technicians, but also get pilots. And um, make sure that you get a balanced uh, view on things uh, but the moment that you start to kind of weigh or put too much emphasis too much weight on one side the balance gets disrupted so if you put if you put too much too much balance on um, you know costs so pilot training pilot wages and the airlines running into issues of, of you know, you making the losses. Flight level. That level doesn't help anyone. On the other side, if you put too much emphasis so on um, cost cutting on, you know, uh, on behalf of safety, then the scales tilt to the side uh, and you will have more accidents two. happening. Yeah. So you need a balance in that, which isn't easy, three I know, two but two it has to be achieved. Hey, concrete hiding and human, thank you. Uh, Hayden, I uh, guess you want to go on um, on long range. Well, yeah, I mean, I've been flying short range now for 15 years and I only have uh, I plan to have uh, my retirement in three years from now so um, I've, I've always wished to be a captain of 747 but I would not be declined obviously and I know it's a completely a luxury problem I, I admit that and um, I'm very fortunate to actually have that option but um, if it's a 787 and then 777 maybe, it's a fantastic opportunity. Oh, look at that. Look at those clouds. Um, so, of course, I mean, you know, I, I'm, I feel, I feel um, fortunate either way. But definitely, I do want to go and do some long range uh, before I retire. <laughs> no cloak on. No, I don't have. I never applied for A380 or A330, 340. No, no, I never did that. And they're not going to trick me into that. No way. Yeah, I, I, I kind of thought that's sad to you know to hear that the last 747 was rolled out. But you just have to also admit that four haulers, so four engine aircraft, um, are just not really that efficient. Right. So you have with the ETOPS uh, capability these days and the safety that has been achieved there as well with the twin engines. Um, well, I mean, you know, I, I, I think uh, regarding efficiency, fuel efficiency, the choice is clear. Uh, Rebonus, because for us, so again, it's one of those luxury things. Um, so when you when you fly long range, um, you have to realize that your destination or number of destinations is limited. While on short range, you have an enormous amount of destinations that can fly to, and, and that keeps things interesting. Long range 
if you let's say you only have like five or six like destinations or even ten only um, after a couple of years it become very very kind of um, routine so again luxury problem yes but if you have the option to choose a a fleet that has very interesting destinations um, worldwide then of course you would rather work something and that uh, on that front not not so much uh, an aircraft that has limited options or maybe even a limited lifespan uh, Andreas yes yeah how does long route shifts work you made a flight then the rest of the day yeah so Jim Gordon normally um, you have about 24 hours um, stop over somewhere so let's say you fly to New York you are there for 24 hours before you return that would be the norm um, there are obviously some destinations where safety um, hearings and uh, safety recommendations are such that you should have two days rest uh, before flying back and we know that some aircraft are capable these days of doing enormous long-range flying we talk about 16 to 18 hours flights so you know you look at the yeah the routing the destinations the time zones that you fly through etc etc and then it's either 24 hours or 48 hours and then sometimes obviously if you don't have a daily flight so let's say you only serve a certain destination twice a week well then you're going to have three days four days um you know a night stop um somewhere else that can happen too but for an airline that has many flights to destination yeah the norm is uh, 24 25 one, ready to send the flight to the 100. Uh, would you say it's worth a hundred thousand euros today to finance flight school well i mean if you if you speculate about um prospects obviously just like we mentioned with the growth rates and the amount of uh, demand for airline pilots the prospects are good so if you see it as investing hundred thousand euros in your future um with good pay at you know and not having much risk of, of not finding employment um, then it can weigh you know risks and benefits but I cannot give you a straight answer on that it all depends on where you live and what the prospects are in your country Well, Andreas, I don't know. It's, um, I mean, the jumbo jets that just left the factory, they're going to fly 25, 30 years. So, you know, I, the 747 will not disappear immediately. That looks absolutely gorgeous. Lovely. Where are we? Halfway, somewhere over Finland. Tampere, just north, uh, east of Tampere. Oh yeah, at the moment these uh, flights from uh, from uh, Asia to to Europe, yeah, they can be very long. Yeah. Uh, you start to fly next three, Monday. Uh, the amount of debt is going uh, complete at least in 50 hours from a commercial is scary, but we'll see how it goes. I'm going in, no turning back now. Well, with you, I wish you all the best. Obviously, um, and I, like I said, I think um, prospects are good. Um, when ready to send flight level 100, Gemini 615. So early this year, I argued that um, with the you know, the war in the Ukraine going on and the high energy costs, um, difficult to predict the economical impact. Um, 
And I mean, we're not we're not in clear water yet, are we? But um, energy More prices are falling. So, at least on that front, there is definitely some some um, some pressure taken off. Since British moves, here you go. Thanks so much, Moose. Thank you for the uh, 29 months. It says here. Amazing. Thanks so much for the long-term support. I hope you're doing good. Nice to see you. Hey, Club Class. Uh, assumes you are actually competent. You could invest in a fortune on a flat training and find out you're not good enough to... Well, Club Class, and that's something, obviously, where I would say, if you have an airline that sponsors a big amount of that money of your training, um, they would make sure with certain entry tests that you have the qualification and you have the ability yeah, to become an airline pilot. The other way around, if you are applying at a flight school that, let's say, just charges 100,000 euros and is a profit center on its own, well, yeah, how do you find out whether or not you actually have everything you need to become a, you know, a good pilot? Um, so a lot of that risk is uh, transferred onto your shoulders, yes. Will you try the longitude uh, and the, the Garmin 5000? Yes, indeed, I will. Yeah, absolutely. What will you do when you retire? Lots of streaming. Well, Hayden, what I want to do, so my dream would be to to get my PPL again um, and do some yeah private flying. Uh, my wife obviously enjoyed uh, the private flying uh, before I became a uh, airline pilot. So that's one thing. Um, maybe get a instructor license maybe not sure about that yet but um depends on how i feel about this and um yeah so definitely live streaming so you know keep connected um with the community and it's 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 hard to describe but what i have experienced over the last is it almost six years? Five and a half, six years? I think six years, isn't it? That I've been streaming. So the friendships that I've made through that, the, the amazing things that I've been able to do through live streaming, you know, the, 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 the lives that I've touched that way, I've never, I would have never been able to otherwise. So um, this community, and I'm not saying me, I'm saying this community has done such a lot for so many people and mostly you're probably not aware of it actually but that is something that you know i would not just just leave right so i would definitely continue streaming uh, on a regular basis um so as much as i have you know this community or continue to have the community that i have and the interest of that community um watching interacting like today um, you know, following along the developments in aviation, um, as long as that's there, I don't see why I should stop streaming. And I've said it before, it's an amazing time to be in flight swimming right now. There's just so much stuff going on. And then hopefully, 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 I'm, I'm hoping that, um, that uh, we will see flight sim shows again, like Cosford, so that we, uh, you know, we can get together from time to time and meet up. That would be cool. Hey, Bone King. Uh, flight to Malaga during the holiday period. Unfortunately, I had to book a flight with Ryanair because much cheaper than Lufthansa and Iberia, which costs about a thousand euros. Yeah, it's, flights have become expensive. Yeah. Yeah. Hey DJ, that's uh, that's nice. Thank you so much for the kind words. 
<laughs> so subscribe a discount for training. What training? Beer boss, um, you know, here for flight simming, I can, I can uh, give you some inputs. But I'm not a professional instructor, right? So obviously, um, I have a high level of respect for anyone instructing other people uh, in aviation or any other avi uh, profession for that matter. But, um, you know, in aviation, being an instructor, it takes a lot. It really does. Oh, if you get if I get my CFI, yeah, well, I don't, why not? Sure. <laughs> oh, private flight school. Learn to fly an A three twenty three weeks. Oh, that that's pretty much impossible. Okay, we're close to destination. Get lobby about the game. And Hayden, thank you much for the hundred bits. That's really kind of you. See you at the Royal International Air Tattoo. Well, yeah, maybe maybe that's something we could do. Because I've been here to the ELA in uh, in Berlin. That was nice as well. Don't get a cheap uh, rental in uh, Malaga. Yeah, you've got to be careful sometimes with these things. Uh, Andreas, it will be. So the plan was to get the 777 to, to then have the... Um, 747-400 retire, but of course that's now delayed because the uh, 747s are, or the, sorry, the 777s are delayed. <laughs> Which you are instructed per definition. <laughs> uh, Shifunsky, how often do passengers ask for visit of the flight and after flights? Um, well, sometimes before the flight, sometimes after the flight, and I would say I have that on a daily basis. Good evening, Triple One Zero Four with you, Three Seven Zero. And quite often, it's someone who is a little bit afraid of flying. Um, so, it it kind of helps them to speak to the people that you know they entrust their life uh, in. So. So they, they, they appreciate just having looked into the flight deck and seeing the faces um, of those individuals who are flying the plane. What do you think is a good time to start in that sim? I mean, with what knowledge? Well, the important thing is you have, an air, you have an aircraft that you feel comfortable with. It doesn't matter what aircraft it is, but you need an aircraft that you feel comfortable with and that doesn't stress you. And then um, listen to some, some you know, people streaming or doing videos. Um, and then choose two airports. Get to know with the local kind of uh, procedures, arrival, departure procedures and then get used to the normal um, communication stuff. And once you feel comfortable with that, um, on Vatsim, for example, they have some events from time to time, um, especially for people that are starting out on Vatsim. So I would look for that. Yeah, and don't be discouraged. Everyone makes mistakes. Um, even I still make mistakes. Right, I don't always copy the right uh, clearance. Or always, I you know, I don't get things 100% correct. That's just the way it is. Uh, don't be embarrassed. It happens to the best of us. Um, but the thing is, what we'll find out is that the learning curve is very steep. But I would definitely take that step because having ATC, and it doesn't matter if it's Pilot Edge or Iveo or Vatsim. Um, the important thing is that you you have that service. And just feel that extra level of immersion. Contact radar one one nine decimal one. Have a do it. Signal five four eight. You always call it radar center, but quite often I will try to to listen and see, um, you know, contact Ryan radar or contact. Um, Hail security control, whatever. I try to remember that, but of course, um, if it's an airspace I'm not familiar with, and I didn't quite copy who to contact exactly the name, I'll just say radar. It's fine. Don't worry about it. These are little things.
that is the firm Demon 4 of. If you want to find the 747 again, would you ever fly the A350, A380? No. Um, you just have to realize that, I mean, again, if you have the luxury of choosing between so many different aircraft types, um, it's, it's something where emotions play a certain role, but uh, of course, then some, you know, calculated, um, well, also, are you, are you weighing some, some uh, you know, pros and cons, uh, things like the routing, um, etc. So, you know, at some point, whatever suits you best, you can make that decision. And I know people who flew the A380 loved it. Um, or the A350, they love it, and it's good for them. Uh, personally, I just, I don't know, I'm just more a, a Boeing guy, I would say. Just like people prefer to drive, I don't know, a, a BMW or a Mercedes or whatever. Um, it's just a personal preference. Have people recognized you from stream? It has happened, Mekan. Um, it has actually happened two or three times, I would say. Yeah. Not often, but yeah, it can happen, yeah. Clipper 104, when ready, descend to flight level 100. When ready, down 100, Clipper 104. Well, Roy, it'll become more and more natural at some point, and you become less uh, anxious about it. Uh, do you think that flight simmers should learn stuff like meteorology and learn flying with G-aircraft or is it uh, okay to hop into the Phoenix right away? Well, I mean, hmm, if you if you truly um, want to excel in certain things, um, then of course it's good to also learn things like meteorology, um, GA flying, basic understanding of aerodynamics, uh, weight and balance, that those sort of things. The idea is that as you get in contact with these, um, you know, these uh, systems and um, certain uh, weather conditions, you will feel so much more accomplishment by understanding what's going on. Um, it just makes everything more complete. But yes, it's up to you. Um, you know, you're not forced to do so. But I think personally, if you have the time and if you, you know, don't mind reading some basic stuff about, a, uh, you know, topics like meteorology, then yeah, do so by all means. I mean, oh, the engine out video five years ago. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? I need, maybe I need to do that and update one. Yeah, Helsinki Control, correct. And Alpha, hey, how you doing? Uh, Roy, you know, that's that's for me, that's always a, a really nice compliment. If, if I hear people saying, hey, you know, I enjoy watching your streams because I always learn something new. Uh, that's exactly, you know, why I'm doing this. Um, or if, uh, if I make uh, instructional videos. Toto, if you're still here, um, if you want, next week, uh, we could be doing a shared flight again in the Challenger. Would appreciate that very much. Because at the moment, because I, I, I thought I'd give other people a chance as well, but... Um, there's not many, many uh, people here that have have the guts to fly with me <laughs> on stream. That is so. Hey, Shri, oh, Shri Hari, how are you doing? Yes, going to see Santa. Everyone's scared, right? I mean. <laughs> Can you explain what is RMP? Required navigational precision. So the the beginning was area navigation, so RNAV. So RNAV was the beginning and 
there, because of uh, the accuracies achievable to these days with the INS systems and the updating through either DV or um, GPS, has made the systems so reliable that um, you can navigate um, from one position or one fix to another fix without actually having to have ground stations. Um, so RMP so is a, a um, yeah, so RMP uh, required navigation performance, performance position, I would say precision, but it's performance, yeah. So it's a, um, a follow-up of the RNF and um, simply speaking, RMP is, um, is a standard where you have certain rules and regulations and certain systems need to be in place in order to fly RMP or be RMP approved. And um, one of the um, important things about RMP is that you will need something like a system that gives you a warning if the required precision or performance is not achieved anymore by the system. So let's say you're doing an approach, an RMP approach, and it has 0 0.3 nautical miles as a required um, performance or precision um, requirement and your estimated accuracy goes above that, you will get a system warning. Here, for example, you will get NAF accuracy downgrad. And um, then you have some approaches these days that have a clear um, requirement to have GPS updating, for example. Right, so sometimes you'll see uh, GSS required. Um, I can show you, for example, for the um, for the Airbus or A320. So, in order to fly, a correction. Um, I think you read every day. If you there are eight five three passing the kilo one one zero climbing to two eight zero with a direct to Netflix. So I've showed you this. Um, so you've got some minimum requirements to start an RMP approach, right? One FMS, one GPS, two uh, IR two, units, uh, level, uh, one MCDU, eight, zero, one flight think, director, uh, one zero, three, and one, one uh, prime uh, flight yeah, eight, uh, display on the pilot flying side. Two NAF displays and two flight control unit channels. And the last time we actually failed, um, well, at the end we failed both uh, flight control unit channels. So the order pilot panel uh, become completely, uh, became completely useless. And so we couldn't fly an RMP approach. No, so, so you can fly, so the thing is this, so there are, well, these days, I mean, RMP normally requires you to have GPS available, at least one GPS for updating available, but not necessarily. So there still may be approaches available um, where you have DME, DME updating, for example, and then you just have to make sure that your required accuracy is um, being met. What learning resources would you recommend for learning about procedures? Uh, what, what procedures? I mean, flying procedures. Um, there's there's so many um, 
possibilities. And if you just uh, search, for example, um, some online bookstore, um, it's got lots of options. But the thing is this, I always find that there are resources out there that obviously are, <laughs> that are too, too difficult to comprehend for someone that's not gone through flight school, for example. So, um, Wind bill 711, when ready, descent to flight level 100, cleared. Renvi to Delta, arrival, runway 03. Clear to you, Renvi to Delta, arrival, runway 03, and we're ready, descent level 100, windmill 711. So let's just check that we have the right arrival. Yeah, Renvi to Delta is inserted. Change your knowledge to prove your uh, knowledge when flying in the Benavon sim. 17, when ready, descent to flight level 100. Well, the thing is this, so aviation is, is, um, it's just put in so many different subjects, like performance, meteorology, um, navigation, and etc, etc. So, um, it's, it's a very, very large field, um, of different things you need to, to know about. Now, procedures there the difficulty is that different yeah, aircraft three, types zero, have different eight, procedures because the sift systems may differ Backing a little bit holding golf, camber, three, zero, eight. so it's difficult to give a you know very simple straight answer on that um right let's just go down here so we've got mac descend up blue 100. now guys i need to prepare for the approach um thank you so much for all the questions uh, how would you set the transponder in taxi on the ground in A320? Well, we always put that to auto, um, but of course that sim or pilot edge sometimes requires you to have a different um, different uh, switching to have, uh, let's say, more Charlie show up on on the uh, on the scope. Hey, Nikita, how are you doing? speed. Uh, speed is uh, 0.65 Mach. Spin up 54 Bravo. Spin up 54 Bravo, have you already converted to uh, not? So let's enter the weather first of all. Um, uh, the speed is uh, 300 knots, if that's what you're asking. Oh wow, hang on, I've got. Uh, we have, Bravo, we have uh, Roman EB approach as well, fantastic. I mean, That's really cool. Uh, so I've just received the ATIS. Oh, well, let me go get that through here. Three zero zero or less. Camber three zero eight to line up runway two four. So let's get the I don't ATIS. There we go. So we get by back to Camber three zero eight. Camber three zero eight. Even when only so we have uh, uh, runway zero three. Uh, Transition level six five. The wind zero five right. zero at fifteen knots. That's quite a lot actually. Uh, no, nine kilometers, light snow, overcast, 700 I feet. So it's very nice um, raw data weather. So let me just enter those values into the MCVU. Yeah, so the whole topic regarding RNF operation or RMP operation. Um, I wouldn't say it's complicated, but there's a lot to learn about it, so... It doesn't do justice to kind of cover it in, you know, five minutes. So, six, five. I've got nine kilometers, light snow, over by 700, so with that wind, uh, we would have quite a wind chill factor there. One zero zero nine. Cool. So we are doing the Arnav approach. Um, just want to check something here really quickly. So, Robin Yemi. Hello, Sky Control. Good evening. Fina three Sierra Mike. Flight level one four zero inbound Tebro. Three zero Mike, 
Direkt med Bix Klein för att han är tre fixer och finna tre ser Mike. Jag vill bara checka något väldigt snabbt, gubbar. Jag vill se om vi kan praktisera någonting. Jag tror att jag kan rogue till den rune. Red Nose 2605, passing through 5245 till 5290 inbound 3 sekund. Grämming Red Nose 2607, Husky Control, Freda Contact, Line to Flight Cobalt 310. Cleared local 6 Alpha arrival runway 221. Climb flight level 310 and cleared uh, lock at uh, 6 Alpha arrival runway 22. Red number 2617. Runway 22 left. Sorry, 22 left. Red yeah, actually sit down, like a negative rights. Um, so for example, when you fly these days to destinations like um, Tel Aviv, Beirut, um, Amman, you often have GPS jamming. So there, um, you lose the GPS updating. And then if you don't have, you know, very good uh, quality DME updating, then you can actually have a accuracy downgrade. Yeah. Passing 3000, camber 308. Camber 308, proceed the direct DVEC. Dark DVEC, camber 308. That's a shame, I can't do that. Right. Um, so, we are planning on the RMP approach. Um, zero 03. I have a feeling we're going to be a bit high here because it looks like there's a holding pattern inserted there. And I was talking too much, not really checking the routing. 84 miles. So that's the, the one of the biggest... Um, problems you can get is if on the arrival routing there is a holding racetrack pattern at the final descent or near the final descent point well let's say at, at the initial fix the fms in the um airbus 320 will actually calculate with one pattern before doing the approach so that's why it's always advisable to get the runway um, into the data here into the uh, uh, progress page so that you get a direct straight distance could new subscribers right, please make their way to the first class cabin where complimentary drinks, snacks and premium flight infotainment will be served. Thank you. Thank you so much to Solid uh, LP. Thank you for becoming a member on the channel. Thank you for the new sub subscription. Welcome. Do you know if you can uh, do with uh, GSX putting me at an angle? Uh, Florian, well, you can pre-plan and save that. So kind of a custom pushback. Now I've had issues with pushback. Um, we all know that, but um, that was just me. So what you can do is um, take the holding out. Wind uplink exists, what? Excuse me? Right, let's, hä? That's an error. What's going on there? No. <laughs> User error. That is a bit weird. That is really strange. Right, I'm going to try to clear that out. No, I can't clear that out. Why? Okay. Ah, okay, have, I didn't click insert, that's why. Ah, okay. 
That's the thing. There we go. So Wendy. So Renvi to Delta takes us directly to Ropov. Switching to Unicom for lot three mic X ray. Thank you and have a good night. So let's see. So there we go, straight in now. So Rop off and then we'll do Rop off to Luca. So two and a half thousand at Rop off. Just gonna put that in there. Now the important thing is that you, you're not allowed to change anything from the final descent point, which is Uno right now, uh, Unuka. Um, so 2,400 is mandatory. The same for the three degrees. Helsinki radar. Good evening. Your rings one delta two. So 2,400, three degrees. Distance five miles. One, one five, climbing three six over direct correct network. five miles. So that's all correctly programmed. And the missed approach goes. Romeo Oscar 364 and then to Vikip 2500. All correctly programmed, so that's fine. Yeah, so we're just a tad high still. Um, 56 miles. Yeah. Went from the right. They yeah, were slowly coming into path, but that's fine. Uh, weather is uh, marginal. Runway, let's say it's uh, wet at least. Um, Auto land, no threats. Weather, we'll do a non precision approach. Transition level was 6.5. And the minimums. So we're going to use El Navina. We're not allowed to do LPV here in the A320. So it's uh, minimum 920, which is fairly low. That's 280 feet high. Windmill 711, contact the Rovaniemi radar. 129 decimal liner. Bye-bye. 129 decimal liner. Thank you so much. Bye-bye from Windmill 711. It's going to be I busy. Oh, negative. Uh, are you going to be controlling on the um, on the weekend for the Santa Fly-in? Remaining approach. Good evening from Windmill 711. We're passing 177, descending level 100, information delta. Windmill 711, Rovaniemi radar contact. Descent 5,000 feet. QNH1010. Descending 5,000 feet, QNH1010, windmill 711. Cylinder 9 or X to go. Leaving my airspace, contact Helsinki Control 121, decimal 3, correct. Helsinki Control 121, decimal 3, Cylinder 9 X to go. Bye bye, thank you. Right, so we logged off now. Fantastic. Um, that is supposed to be 6.40. Are you ready for the approach brief? Go ahead. So we are transitioning on the Renvi to Delta arrival. And we are planning for a RNF approach, 0-3. Um, sector is 2,400 feet. The I'm final altitude is 2,400, two, minimum three, is uh, 920 feet. Well, Missed approach like straight ahead until Romeo Oscar 364, then left uh, to Vikip, climbing 2,500 feet. We'll stop on the problem. Uh, unfortunately not, family's coming. Okay, no worries. 
Yeah, I'm also visiting my family, so in Switzerland. So, uh, yeah, I can't join either, which is uh, kind of a shame. 60 tons. I uh, will do a flat four. After Automate medium. And, um, so we we'll need about 1700 meters with automatic medium and vacating. Hey, Peebask, nice to see you. Yes, I'm doing well. How are you doing? So we're vacating probably via Foxtrot, I think it is up there. Oh, sorry, Delta. So Delta right off Tango back to the apron. Maybe we'll be able to do Charlie. But that's probably pushing it a bit, but we'll see. So, automatic medium. Wind 711, flight direct, drop off, and speed 250 knots or greater. Direct to drop off and speed 250 or greater, windmill 711. Right, there we go. Automatic medium. Yeah, so we'll do that with our final approach mode. And uh, threats, well, we have some marginal weather on... Radar, hello, but right now, I don't see that as a big threat, and we have uh, fuel available. So 2.4 estimated for landing, maybe 2.3. And min diversion is about 1.6. So in case of one go around, or oh, what go around, so we could do another approach. Any questions? No questions. There we go. It looks cold. <laughs> oh. Hey, Max, how are you doing? And 10.10 was uh, the QNH. 10.10 he said. Wind 060 degrees, 13 knots. So runway 03, clear for takeoff. Clear for takeoff, runway 03, it's on top of Wind 711, descend 2,500 feet after drop off, cleared RMP approach, runway 03. Descend 2,500 feet and after drop off, cleared the RMP 03, wind was 71. Uh, why the beacon lights are lighting separately? Um, that's just the way they are wired. Um, two independent circuits. Approach checklist. Barrow ref. QNH 1010 zero, one, zero set. 1010 one, zero, zero, set. Seatbelts on minimum. Bar row 920 feet set. Set and checked. Auto brake. Medium set. Set and checked. Engine mode selector. Normal. Approach checklist completed. Uh, landing visibility was good. Now wind shear, light snow was fun again. Fantastic. That's, that's a cool thing. So, um... We're going to go according to procedure. So drop off 2,500 and after that we'll descend 2,400. Again, it's very important that we start the approach um, at the indicated charted altitude. Um, and we would not, we would not change that altitude. So we would not temperature correct that. Uh, if we do that in final approach. So that means we look at the minimum temperature that we allow to fly the approach. And it says there, uh, VNAV is not authorized below minus 20 degrees. So we have minus 5 today, so we can do uh, LNAV, VNAV, hence final approach mode. If we were outside of that limit, we could only do the LNAV minimum 
And we would have to cold temperature correct the altitudes. Engine anti is on. Uh, Henrik, sorry, what was your question? Uh, bup, 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 bup. Center 1 1, speed 2 1 0 knots. 2 1 0, center 1. Would you be so kind to post it again, please? 7 1 1, speed 2 0 0 knots. Wait, no, 7 1 1, 2 0 0 knots. Transavia 1 2 2, flight direct Netflix. So we're going to go vertical speed Transavia here. Wanted. Slow down. Uh, residual pressure means and why it can occur for the first time weeks ago after landing a brain with an uh, yeah normally normally the pressure controller would open the outflow valve um, and I've never seen that happen or be an issue in the A320 but um, yeah it can happen if the if the outflow valve is malfunctioning flaps one speed checked flaps one And then you have to manually open the outflow valve to get rid of that residual pressure. Hey, Lewis Daniel, thank you much for the raid. Welcome, everyone. Currently inbound. Whoop. No, nope, that's the way around. Radar uh, to the alive. Thank you. Inbound to Rovaniemi. Since we can't join the event this weekend, I thought I might as well fly in today. So the approach phase is now active because the VDEF bar is showing. Santa 1 1 free speed. Free speed, Santa 1 And Santa 1 1 descend 2500 feet after drop off, cleared RMP. Approach on wind 03. Oh, yeah, you're right. Correct. 2500 feet after drop off, clear for the. Outstar? I'm going to go down to 2,400 feet now. Flaps 2. Speed checked. Flaps 2. So there we go. Out star, 2,400. Set. So we are inbound. One speed one eight zero knots or greater until six DME. Wind zero six zero degrees one three knots or on way zero three clear to land. Did land zero three uh, one eighty two six copy it to windmill seven one one. So I tried to cater for that, but we we're already very low. So gear down. Gear down. Cabin so crew now be seated. Inbound to the final approach mode. Uh, so inbound to the final approach fixed, so now we can go final approach. So half a mile to go. I can see managed here. Flaps three. Speed checked. Flaps three. Flaps four. Speed checked. Flaps full. So just checking again, we have the accuracy, both sides is good. Six miles to the field, fantastic. Speed checked. Flaps three. No, flaps full. <laughs> flaps full. Speed checked. Flaps full. <laughs> oh, that, that co pilot. So we should be descending now. Misapproach is set, and uh, we've got some altitude cross check. So four miles, nineteen sixty. They've already been clear to land. Wind is uh, thirty-three knots from the right. That's a lot. <laughs> Sounds awful. Look like me, yeah. Weird, isn't it? So four miles to a uh, nineteen sixty. I don't know why that's happening. Um, so Mr. Approach 2,500 is set. And then 3 miles, 1640. Bang on. Looking good. I expect the runway to be somewhere slightly left. Landing checklist. 
E-Camp Memo. Landing, no blue. Landing checklist completed. It's all set. Fantastic. Engine ice is on. So, 3 miles, 1640. Right on the money. Don't see the runway just yet. Ah, I can see the approach lights now. So let's go manual thrust. And then two miles, we'll check 1, again. It's checked at 13.22 miles. That looks good. 1,000. Manual flight. 1,000 is checked. Yeah, I can see the power piece now. Three red, one white. Just correct that. On path. So once we get to the minimums, we expect the, or the missed approach point, I should say, we expect the... Um, 100 above. When we're 100 inside, above. In sight. 500. The flight rate to go into vertical speed, Minimum. heading minimums. Continue. 300. 200. It looks shallow to me for some reason. Getting a little bit low. 50. 40. 30. 20. Retard. Retard. Lawyer. I need a replay. I'll see a replay of that. Manual brakes. I had literally no elevator authority there. I pulled, nothing happened. And we were right on, we were right on speed, weren't we? Now that's how pros do it. It's the icing bug. Have not heard about the icing bug. That's weird. Runway is located. Windmill 711. Windmill 711, welcome to Rovaniemi. Right tango to stand 9, recommend. Right tango, stand 9. Thank you so much. Windmill 711. Stand 11, wind 060 degrees, 13 knots, runway 030 to land. Structure, you to land, Reason thing basically makes the Phoenix fall out of the sky if you don't turn it off. Seriously. Uh, okay, we approach uh, information delta requesting clearance to Helsinki. 534, information delta is current, employee for the PDC is not working. Clear uh, to Helsinki, runway 03, we are NV3, Bravo departure. Climb for level 350. Let me just check one, the two, position five, four. number 9. Okay, clear the Helsinki, level 3, Bravo departure from A303, climb flight level 350, 12.254, in A534. That's correct. Oh, right at the end, okay, that's the number 9. Do you have a CRJ? I have it, I have not flown it for ages. Ah, so, hang on. So what? You need no to turn spoilers. that off. No reverse engine one and engine two. D cell. Seventy knots. <laughs> what? <laughs> Lol. But that will come on next time as well, right? Or will that stay off now if I put that to zero? That's number nine, right there. Ladies and gentlemen, you have to disable the, the sim settings. Yeah, we'll do that in a minute. For your safety, please remain seated with your seatbelt fastened, leaving all 
items of hand luggage safely stowed until the seatbelt signs have been switched off. After landing checklist. Aircraft, Radar and predictive wind shear system. Off. After landing checklist completed. Please be careful when opening overhead lockers as items may fall out causing injury. We'd like to remind you that smoking is not permitted until you've reached a designated smoking area. If you require assistance when you leave the aircraft, please contact a member of our ground staff. If you're connecting to another flight today and hold the boarding card and transfer wallet to the vice part of the terminal, please follow the signs to flight connections. This will lead you on to your departure terminal and please check your gate number in the I'm Trying to remember the last time I had icing in the to avoid sim. Missing your onward flight, we strongly recommend that you go But that is weird, yeah. Terminal. All right, well at least we learned something today. Flight Connections Desk. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the entire airline, thank you very much for choosing to fly with us today. And we Center hope to see you again in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Right triangle, left to 8.76. Right triangle, left to 8.76. Right triangle, left to 8.76. General options, you said. Uh, some general options. Um, flight model or something, or? Miscellaneous developers flight model uh, assistance ah okay assistance um, Oh, icing effect. Ah, okay. There we go. Well, all right, guys. There you know. Now you know if you have the same issue like I just had, that the aircraft doesn't respond in the elevator. That's the problem. All right, clear that. <laughs> Fly the PNG instead. No. Well, yeah, I mean, it's not bad, but. And there you have it. All right. So I'm just wondering now if you. The thing is this. So even if you switch on wing anti eyes, it will probably not help you because the elevator isn't heated. It's just the outboard slats that are heated in the A320. Parking checklist. Parking brake or chocks. Parking brake set. Set. Engines. Off. Wing lights. Off. Fuel pumps. Off. Parking checklist completed. Thank you. Right, let's have a look at the scenery. So this is a new one. So just got that. Um, and they actually have uh, the interior model as well. Very nice. Look at that. I was going to ask Nikotiv, have you been here? Sure you have been here, right? That's beautiful. has a little bit of a Santa Claus there. It's 50% off Fly and See Santa say, hey guys, okay, so yeah, by all means, if you if you plan to join um, the Fly to Santa or Fly to See Santa this weekend, I can definitely recommend the scenery here. Can you see the smoke come out here or the, uh, the steam, fantastic. Look at that. Oh, lovely. So
So, I'm going to put this to afternoon time. So, right now, uh, if we put this to 2, or even uh, just noon time, that is the maximum you will get daylight wise. So, if I put this to clear, that is pretty much it. Thank you, Tremonia. Yeah, thanks for joining. Let me just see how high the sun would go. Look at that. Isn't that crazy? Look. So you have sunrise at 10.48. And that's how high it goes. Just about there. And then at... At about 2 or 1.30 in the afternoon, it's already sunset. Now, if we go to... Um, the 23rd look at that that is only how high the sun goes that's it you don't get more than that that's how far north we are here um, where do you find out the runway condition braking action normally it, it's um, either given you by NOTAM so you have a, what's called a snow tam um, I'm not sure if we got that today. Um, or you have that um, report on the ATIS. So it's either pilot report, estimated braking coefficient, um, or you have... Um, you have that measured. Let's just get ground services here. Let's get... Uh, Board. <laughs> it makes you want to move to the equator. Oh. Yeah, and if you do join um, that event, make sure you have enough fuel. Definitely. No, so if there's no report, there's no report. You would have to ask the tower if they have a break in uh, coefficient report. Um, you cannot simply assume something's not reported that, you know, the runway is clear, no. Um, so here today we don't have that. Oh yeah, let's, let's do summertime, that's a good idea as well. So let's go uh, June 22nd. So this is what looks like in summertime. So, um, let's have a look. So we go... That's the darkest it gets in summertime. Isn't that crazy as well? Look at that. Brilliant. Uh, no, so... Um, so the thing is, in order for the... For, the, for an aircraft to be able to fly LPV minimum approaches is that the aircraft needs to be able to tune and display the channel, so the EGNOS channel. So in the US we have WAS, W-A-A-S, here in Europe we have EGNOS. And um, that way you would get an identifier here on the screen, um, just like you have an ILS identifier. And so only then when you have positively um, um, connected to the Echno system, would you, would you be able to fly LPV? So, since you can't have that here, you can't fly LPV here. The, uh, the Challenger 650, for example, um, that can fly, fly LPV approaches. Yeah, Megas. Right, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to hop in for about, um, I'm right on schedule at the moment, so I'm going to hop into the Apache. And uh, I'll be flying. Oh, uh, this is another thing, guys. I've just seen this. Um, so for some reason, here in the Phoenix, this is um, going to a grid heading info. But normally, that would not go automatically. So normally, in the, you would have a button, a push button, to get a grid north um, reference
So it's interesting to see that um, here. But that's uh, completely useless. Um, no, I'm not going to go shared flight today, guys. Um, a deep dive, yes, it can happen. It can happen that some uh, operators have um, bought the equipment to fly G bus, S bus, whatever. Um, sure, but the Phoenix doesn't have it. And that was the question, so... Pretty sure that under sim settings, it doesn't say anything about that either, does it? No. Grid North, no. So Grid North um, does not necessarily mean um, it's True North. So Grid North is a projection system depending on the map uh, or a reference system depending on the map projection. But that's uh, a topic I've not come across in aviation for a very long time. I think the last time I, I heard something about Grid North or learned something about Grid North was at flight school. Right, big thank you to all the support again, as always. Thank you so, so much. Um, and so the rest of the program for today is uh, Apache. And then um, at about, in about one and a half hours, we'll go and join the One Nation Out Norway tour in the Kodiak. If you want, you can join. Um, we'll be on, um, on multiplayer. It's European West service. And uh, yeah, you can fly along, feel free. Beautiful, beautiful tour. Hey, Benrith, uh, anybody had the Phoenix say select decide system in the MCU? Mine, it says it and it won't clear. And I have no idea. Okay, so you mean like um, here? Have you tried? Um, oh, there we go. So it doesn't clear for you. Try to, you know, that it had request. So it just said in the brackets request. Click on that first and then click on uh, the other menus. That should work. All right. Big thank you again. Um, take care. And I'll be back streaming normally, I mean, normal flights again next week, Tuesday. So the 13th. If you are joining the, um, the wonderful event, fly and see Santa on VATSIM, enjoy the event, take on enough fuel, you'll need it. Trust me. And then enjoy Rob and Emmy. Right, guys. Thank you so much. See you soon. Good night. Hey, buddy. Greetings. 60-hour workday. Good God. Is it snowing in uh, Berlin? <laughs>